my fellow Earth citizens, we stand at a very precarious moment in terms of the evolution of our species as well as other species. The two very severe threats we face on a planetary level are climate havoc and climate chaos and species extinction, the loss of biodiversity, the contamination and pollution of our biodiversity. Scientists are warning us that species are disappearing at a thousand times the normal rate. In, by the year 2020, more than a quarter of the species will be gone. In agriculture, the crisis is even deeper. In 1995, the United Nations has, had estimated 75% disappearance of diversity in agriculture. Since then, the Amazon has been chopped down for soil. The Indonesian rainforests have been chopped down for palm oil. Argentina is one green desert of round up ready soil. We are expanding monocultures on a scale that the biodiversity of this planet cannot support. And biodiversity weaves the web of life. When that web is ruptured beyond a point of repair, our existence and the existence of other species is severely threatened. On the climate front, scientists are telling us that the load of emissions and pollution of the atmosphere has already locked us in with a 2.5 degree in increase in temperature. And if nothing is done by the end of the century, if there is an end of the century for us, it will be 4 degrees centigrade. Life will be impossible with those kinds of rises of temperature. The glaciers will go, the polar ice caps will melt totally long before that. With that, sea level rise. But these are not only issues of the future. They're happening today. I've been traveling to villages of South India where the rains haven't come this year. These are anyway drought prone areas, the semi-arid tracts of the Deccan. And when the rain falls, there are no crops. When there is no fodder, no grass, animals will start to die. Livestock herders will have no livelihood support. On the coastal area of Orissa, which has been seeing cyclones of intensities never seen before in 1999 with the Orissa super cyclone, last year cyclone Phelan. This year, my colleagues are still struggling to plant the rice three months after the normal transplanting. Thank goodness we have saved salt tolerant and flood tolerant varieties of rice, and those are thriving. Biodiversity is our bridge to the future. And biodiversity and climate change, agriculture and climate change, are very intimately connected. As I wrote in my book, Soil Not Oil, 40 to 50% of all greenhouse gases come from an industrial model of farming. And the same model of farming is creating hunger, it's creating malnutrition, it is providing only 30% of the food people eat. Most of the grain is going for biofuel and animal feed. It's not that we weren't awake to this crisis. After all, in 1992 at the Earth Summit, all the countries of the world international community signed two legally binding treaties. One, to address climate change, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. The other, to address the conservation of biodiversity. And in the Convention of Biodiversity, the two big objectives were how to conserve biodiversity and reverse species extinction and biodiversity erosion, as well as to prevent new forms of genetic pollution and harms to health and environment through genetically engineered organisms, Article 19.3 of the Convention, led to the Biosafety Protocol. I was appointed an expert of the group that 
created the framework for what became the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. Both the treaties were science-led. The United Nations Framework Convention was guided by the International Pal Panel on uh, Climate Change, the Intergovernmental Panel. Thousands of scientists, 2,500 scientists working over decades. These two legally binding treaties and the science behind them are being subverted and undermined by big oil and for the fossil fuel industry in the case of climate change and big ag in the case of the Biodiversity Convention. There are new possibilities in science that these treaties have thrown up. We now have a new science of biosafety to understand the impact of genetically engineered organisms. We have the science of epigenetics that shows that the old assumption that genes have no impact from the environment and they have one directional information flow in the organism doesn't hold true. Organisms are self-regulated and every part of the organism acts and genes are affected by the environment. This is showing up both in terms of human capacity as well as in other life forms. And then we have the new science of agroecology based on the recognition that farmers have the deepest knowledge of farming. But there are new ecological sciences confirming and reinforcing that knowledge. These are the sciences of the future. Each of these streams of knowledge is being threatened. It's being threatened first by denial, but it's also being threatened by replacing informed scientific research and policy based on informed scientific research with a public relations assault humanity has not seen before, both on climate scientists as well as those of us who work on agroecology, who work on food sovereignty, those of us who have built the new framework of biosafety. What is at stake is not just knowledge, it's not just truth, it's not just freedom. What is at stake is our future. We have two options today. Either to continue with business as usual, with domination of big agriculture and big oil, walking and being pushed to extinction. But we have other possibilities. And those are the possibilities we must act on, the possibility of connecting the climate disaster with the disasters in food and agriculture and the threat to biodiversity. We have the possibility of seeing that in ecological agriculture is not just a solution to conserve biodiversity and reverse erosion, but there is a solution to food insecurity and nutritional insecurity. Most importantly, we could address the climate problem. The United Nations has called an emergency meeting on climate change on the 23rd of September. People will be marching on the street to give support, to hold the legally binding treaties in the face of the assault from greed and the power that this greed has given rise to. We have a choice to make. Let humanity rise and transcend beyond the imminent disasters we face. We can create a different path. Let's join our hands, let's join our hearts, let's join our minds to create another future.